Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and Mr. and Mrs. Chairman, dear colleague. Uh, and I thank the organizer to have invited me to try to share with you uh, some of uh, something about tracheal surgery topics. So uh, I've, uh, I have no conflict of interest, uh, lucky me. So uh, what is important to understand uh, that I think a lot of people know in this, uh, in this room is that trachea is more than a fabric. Uh, it's uh, in fact nearly an organ with its own vascularization, its own biomechanic, it's a very complex, it's, it's a localization. Uh, cervical, mediastinal, uh, so it's uh, something much more complex. And uh, the rationale to replace trachea has been defined a long time ago by Hermes Grillo. Uh, it's uh, supposed to be something well vascularized, uh, autologous with longitudinal flexibility, transverse rigidity that can face uh, the negative inspiration pressure to resist to expiratory pressure. And uh, it has to have something that looks like bronchial epithelial surface to be able to clear secretion, and it is supposed to not to be a demanding procedure. So that is in the ideal world. You're going to see that in the end we have not uh, fulfilled completely that. When you want to resect tracheal, there is a lot of rationale. You have to uh, have a very precise pre-op strategy. You have to do, uh, according to uh, the team I work with, a circumferential resection of the lesion. Uh, you have to have well, well vascularized and floppy anastomosis. It's a general rule. And you have to, uh, uh, to deal with the ventilation during surgery. And extracorporeal life support is uh, rarely indicated. Uh, stent and dilatation are only palliative therapies uh, to maybe to come to that surgery, but it is palliative always. The anesthesia and ventilation has gone some rules. Uh, we used to try transtrotentic uh, intubation most of the time, <coughs> and we do like in uh, carinal resection that has been shown by Professor Venuta, we do intubation through the operative field. We don't use eye, uh, eye uh, jet ventilation. I have no experience at all, so I can't tell you why. And uh, the idea is that after the surgery, the patient has to be extubated in the operating room or very soon after. It's a, a, a general rule for tracheal surgery. And these patients, they're, they're going to have lots of endoscopic control during surgery, after world surgery, and some, uh, some years after some time. <coughs> When you remove some trachea, you need uh, to have to to release uh, the part, distal or proximal part of the trachea. Neck flexion is not very expensive, uh, and you can do that. When you remove much more, you can do an extreme neck flexion. You need two pillows over one. It's not very expensive. Uh, you always do when you do surgery. Uh, an anterolateral tracheal finger release always like you you don't even mention it in the in the paper, but everybody does that, and it, it's a good beginning to uh, to release trachea. Uh, and when you need more, you can do uh, a laryngeal release uh, like Dido uh, or a suprayoid laryngeal release Montgomery. And very infrequently, uh, ILA release, I think uh, we've done it once or twice in our experience, so really it's not very helpful. With that, when you combine all these media, you can remove 55% of the trachea. Then you have to uh, do the anastomosis. Not very interesting if you do a running suture or not. Really, it uh, uh, depends on what you believe in. That's really not a problem. What is important is that you need an extraction and you have to protect your anastomosis from the intermediate artery always, whatever the way you use. According to... Uh, to us, uh, the principal uh, contraindication to resection are uh, uh, when you uh, f there is an, uh, an extensive level of the airway uh, where you can't resect without uh, attention uh, in the end, when you've got a, a massive invasion of the mediastinal uh, organs that you can't remove, or where there are remote metastases. And I like this to quote again Hermes Grillo, uh, who has a very uh, f uh, had a fantastic experience. And he said, sometimes you can do very uh, ex extreme thing, even patients with metastases, but in the end, he said, he usually prefer to embark upon tracheal resection and reconstruction where there is a stench of cure. I think it's a good idea. So in fact, in the end, when you've, you've removed a lot of trachea and you have tried everything uh, you want, and there is, you remove more than 55% of the trachea, in fact, you just can't uh, do a, a direct uh, anastomosis. You are in this situation. Usually, whatever the size we are, whatever the long, uh, length of our neck, we have all in this room uh, uh, 11 centimeters, sorry, I didn't, didn't it in inches, uh, trachea. 
that if you remove more than 55 tons, would say six centimeters, two and a half inches, something like that, uh, you're going to be in big trouble. Okay. So as I was asked to, uh, what are the new thing? Uh, the, 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 I, I look like everybody. I uh, look in PubMed and I made tracheal surgery. Uh, and for the last five years, the publication, and I was surprised to see only 15 uh, papers. And the, the last paper, in fact, the more ancient, was from uh, Mr. Venuta Timms, uh, who said in the, in the end of his, his abstract, uh, he said that uh, surgery, tracheal surgery was uh, uh, part of the thoracic surgery, of course, was everyday surgery. And in the near future, there, there would be uh, some place for uh, tracheal transplantation on bioengineering of the trachea. Uh, so it was uh, two dances he, he, in, he had uh, imagined. So let's see about that. So when you want to replace trachea, uh, surgeons, head, neck, thoracic surgeon, vascular surgeon, plastic surgeon, they have invented lots of things to replace trachea. In fact, all substitute used for trachea, they doesn't work. Uh, cadaveric trachea transplantation, prostate, all, all, all has been tried. Lots, lots of this, this thing have failed. Uh, let's say for prostate devices, they generate stenosis and granuloma, infection, and erosion of adjacent organs. And what are adjacent organs? For example, uh, the innermate artery. And when it's eroded, it, it's a it's kind of problem. What about the uh, allogenic transplantation, tracheobronchial transplantation? It's uh, it has been uh, it has been done uh, in the laboratory uh, in Maryland long uh, with a pig. So uh, we have tried it. Uh, it's it's a very demanding procedure. It's uh, you have to deal with infection. You have to deal with immunosuppressive therapy. And why is it so demanding? You you which end lung, heart, lung, uh, 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 even intestine. Why is it a problem? It's a problem because. Trachea is not fabric. Uh, it's more of an organ, but it hasn't. Uh, it does no. Uh, uh, there is no tracheal artery, uh, upper, lower tracheal artery. It's uh, it's arterial vascularization is much more complex. It came from the vagus magnil. The drainous veinage is very complex. It goes to a, a left main, uh, left uh, innominate vein. So it's very complex to uh, take this graft and to transplant it in a human because of its first vascularization. And you imagine, of course, if you have to transplant something with the other vagus, uh, it's, uh, and you put him in a you know, suppressive therapy, it's going to be uh, complex. So when you look again at PubMed, you say tracheal transplantation last five years, you find six papers, and all these papers are uh, a research paper. There is no, uh, no, uh, no publication on human. So this, I think, this uh, transplantation is, is a dead end. Uh, and it won't, uh, I'm not sure it's going to be a solution one day. So another uh, solution, uh, it has been very, it's to use an, an allogenic fresh artigraph and you put stents and you replace trachea and you imagine that this outer is going to become a trachea. This would mean a, a very controversial uh, work of uh, one uh, French colleague, uh, Emmanuel Martineau, and he was very happy to show it works. And, uh, but in fact, uh, there's a, um, Dr. Tsukada was taken this, uh, this work and on chip, and in fact, it proves that this, uh, it's not aorta that becomes trachea, aorta shrinken, and the trachea came to its place. Look, in fact, it's, uh, it doesn't work. It's interesting, but it doesn't work. Despite these results and this controversy, it has been uh, used nearly the same uh, technique on human uh, with uh, eight patients. Uh, by uh, f uh, two uh, French teams with uh, four deaf, and the uh, four uh, not dead patients are still with a stent inside their aorta. So this solution is maybe not a good one. Another uh, interesting and controversial uh, thing, uh, what about the bioengineering of neotrachea? This is very uh, sexy and fantastic idea to imagine that you take a... Uh, uh, large, uh, 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 dead body uh, uh, trachea. You put it. Uh, you you uh, you remove the ce the cells and you put them in the, in a in a bioreactor with the stem cell of the of your future patient and it's gonna build a new trachea. This is very exciting. This is very brilliant. It has been published by Paul Macarini in uh, in GCCS and. Uh, in the Lancet for the first uh, patient, uh, it was a, a young lady, with, uh, where we replaced the uh, left main bronchus. Uh, and uh, as you can see in the bottom of the, the, the side, 
uh, there is lots of comments, so it's very controversial. This is a very uh, tough subject. This is brilliant, this, but I think it's not for every surgery. We want to use it uh, uh, the, uh, tomorrow or next week. So uh, on average, there are lots of teams work on that, and so they, they, you can use, of course, a, a human tracker in the beginning, you, or you can use uh, sometimes prosthetic, and you put, you put stem cell in, a, in a something completely artificial, and uh, it can work sometimes in, in, in animals. And when you look on a PubMed search, again, you, you are a very bad faith when, like me, and you put, you put tracheal bioengineering, last five years, you've got two papers. So I have not uh, looked very thoroughly, I have to admit. And you've got this interesting review uh, of um, a neck surgeon, if I remember, who said uh, you, the blue, uh, the blue uh, uh, thing is to see that they, they pay tribute to what I'm going to uh, say, but that, that it works, so that the... the the autologous trachea done with the, the tissue of the patient. And uh, the last sentence is that despite uh, early promoting, promising results, long-term outcome uh, of bioengineering uh, are still lacking. So it's a work in progress. It's experimental. Maybe one day, five, maybe in this Congress in five years, it's going to be a, uh, completely, uh, you can, we can uh, order uh, whatever tracker you want. Uh, we send a blood uh, supply to our patient and we'll receive a full trachea. But it's not for everybody's surgery right now. So what else? As said George Coulney. So um, we, uh, it's, this is the work of uh, one of my uh, friend and fellow co worker, Dominique Fabre. Uh, where he took uh, some pigs and he made this uh, uh, a local, um, a local uh, uh, neotrachea with a, a, a non-free flap of the neck and with good results, uh, Europolis trachea, and he had uh, the trachea to be uh, rigid with, uh, with the, the uh, ribs, uh, the rib cartilage of the, the same pig with some good results. So after having, uh, having done in, in the in the pigs, we try it on, on the on the human. So how to one one main point was how to have a transverse fertility. So abdominal standing can be uh, for a, a short period of time. External standing can work because outside of the trachea is very something that they don't like to be uh, close to a stand. And so the idea is to put uh, an intramural standing with rib cartilage. And we are going to work to replace that because it's complex and it's, uh, it's not 100% uh, fiable. So we're going to use the titanium rings. It's a work in progress. So uh, what kind of flap? We, uh, the, first we, uh, the two first we tried was, uh, were the anterolateral five free flap, but it's very, it's very thick. And the forearm free flap, called, uh, uh, also known as a Chinese flap, even if the patient was from China, but in fact was an American, uh, it's uh, it's a very fantastic fasciculus flap. You can uh, it's uh, it's you can use a forearm. You it was a it's an old flap. It was uh, described in 1982, and you use a, a fasciculus flap with a, a radial artery and the radial veins to, and you can put it wherever you want. So uh, we used uh, we used so the intramural insertion of rib cartilage of the patient himself to, to do that. And where was that idea from? In fact, it was uh, again you you think you do some invention, and in fact you reinvent something that has been invented by someone else. Usually, and, and this is Erkan Erkan in uh, very uh, in uh, 1997 who described this to uh, to replace uh, half part of the larynx. Uh, and he, he used to uh, this bony part of the uh, to uh, to have a rigid color. So that's where uh, Dr. Kolb, Frederick Kolb, the brilliant plastician, where we we've done we do his surgery, uh, who had uh, give us this idea. You can see this little movie uh, here. This is a, a, a normal trachea of a pig. This is a PTFO, and this is a neo autologous trachea of the pig with its and you can see that it resists to the depression of the inspiration. So that's this is uh, this work. This is working. So you've got the technique you, to to make a, a old trachea for a human, uh, uh, an adult uh, person. You need the, uh, something that is 12 centimeter long, nine centimeter large to have a, to make a, 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 a tube. So you 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 do the you you do the take the fasciculus flap, and then you you use the last the, the common cartilage of the ribs. Left or right, whatever, you, and you you cut these slices of uh, of uh, cartilage, five millimeter uh, large, uh, three millimeter thick, and you're gonna insert it inside, 
the inside, uh, you need nine of it. You, uh, you're going to insert inside subcutaneously uh, in your graft. Then you're going to roll uh, with the skin inside uh, around uh, a stent to uh, give the form, uh, like the, the, the Venakava thing with the, the syringe. And then you, you sew uh, the, the skin to the skin, the, the, the uh, cartilage to the cartilage. And you, this is the right result, and you do, of course, that with the graft implanted in the forearm, to, and you, uh, you, uh, you cut the vessel just before implanting them so that you don't have ischemic time, too long ischemic time. Then you remove the disease of the trachea, and you, uh, you take your graft, and you put it, you do the distal anastomosis first, then the proximal anastomosis, then you do the micro anastomosis, which you don't need microscope, you need uh, magnifying glasses are enough. For example, you can put the artery, right artery, to internal, uh, left internal thoracic artery, and uh, on the vein, on the left innominated vein, sometimes there are two veins. This is the final result with the anastomosis. And you can see uh, this is a uh, you can see it from the point of view of the anesthesi anesthesiologist uh, with the neotrachea here, the f the free flap pedicle, uh, with a nice result. We've done so far. Uh, I've just stopped uh, in 2014 to have some uh, some uh, some follow up, but uh, so we start this in 2004, and uh, with 16 first patients were achieved in 2014, 10 years. Uh, it was mostly primary tracheal neoplasm, mostly our adenocystic carcinomas, something that doesn't puzzle you. Uh, more uh, one turret carcinoma and two lymphomas. In fact, we, uh, we didn't remove lymphoma and tracheas. That there were people who had been treated surgically wrongly for a, lymph a lymphoma with a destruction of the trachea and were in the second position. And a very iatrogenic, fantastic story of a long, long uh, history of tracheal standing, I think, well, this lady had received a... Uh, 40 stents in 10 years and no, uh, with no trachea in the end. What kind of restriction we've done? So the full trachea six times, full trachea and main bronchi twice, not a good idea, and uh, a, a total laryngectomy once, and uh, a, uh, a total tracheal memory wall uh, twice. It was, a, uh, it was the beginning of her experience. Post-operative care is, uh, is a little nightmare for the patient and the, and the physician, but uh, uh, it's worth uh, to do it. Uh, you need these people, who, they will need antibiotics. They will need a, uh, one big silicone stent for some days, a medium time for a stent. We removed that day seven, day eight we use. Uh, they always have a temporary tracheostomy done up the proximally to the first and the proximal anastomosis. They will need physiotherapy, <coughs> postural drainage, aerosol therapy, fiber optic bronchi uh, uh, cleaning once or twice a day. And some of these people with uh, uh, adenocystic carcinoma have received radiotherapy with no problem for the graft. What are the results? We had two uh, free deaths, one with the necrosis of the, of the graft uh, that we, we've done with two, three times, and uh, two, uh, two IRDS uh, for the people, we, uh, the two patients we, we, we replaced, the trachea and two main bronchi. Uh, ten patients are still alive, with, uh, two are with still a tracheostomy, and one with a distal stand. Why a distal stand? Because of the rupture, you can see here, the rupture of the distal cartilage, that it was, it's too complex to replace, so that's why this lady has still a stand, but she's okay, and she's still alive with no recurrence of his, her disease. This is the kaplan meyer cell analysis with a 57% at five years for mostly patients with, with cancer. It's no, 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 not that bad. You can see on this CT scan done one year after surgery of this lady <coughs> that uh, cartilage are still alive. So did we fulfill the uh, Grillo specification? Uh, with, with, with this, uh, this uh, neotrachea, autologous total uh, trachea. It's well vascularized, yes. It's autologous, yes. It's, it's got uh, longitudinal flexibility and transversality, yes. There is no bronchial epithelium on the surface, uh, so there is no, no, clear, no uh, ability of clear secretion, and it is a very demanding procedure. So, Mr. Glover, sorry, but uh, it's uh, not completely, uh, the contract is not uh, completely uh, fulfilled. So what is my the conclusion I offer you? It's uh, among all the methods, bioengineering is promising, but not for every situation. Uh, so total autologous uh, replacement of trachea has pushed away some limit for some patient. You, of course, need a careful and complete worker for this patient. Uh, we don't recommend to do this surgery when the two main bronchi or even one main bronchus is invaded because it's, it's going to be too long for the, uh, for the secretion. 
the transitory tracheostomy is mandatory, and uh, we are working uh, on uh, transplantation of autologous mucosal cell to have uh, in the end a, uh, a mucociliary uh, functional thing and uh, on the titan rings to replace uh, the, um, the cartilage that are not completely uh, working every time. So thank you for your attention.